there's something that's been bugging me that I think I need to mention. I think I would be enjoying this new Fate series a whole lot more if Mordred and her master was the main characters. Like, they were the main central focus of this story. Now, don't get me wrong. I love, I love this new Fate series. I love the different servants, the masters. I love the plot. It's really nice. However, I feel like I would truly enjoy this so much more if Mordred and her master was just given so much more spotlight. If they had episodes to themselves. They had episodes to build more chemistry with each other. Episodes to dive more into their characterization. I feel like I would truly enjoy this series a whole lot more. And I mean, it's already really good. It just, I feel like it was a very missed opportunity by the way this series is being displayed or written. I, I, I feel like it would have been a lot better if Mordred was just given more time to be a central focus of individual episodes. Now, besides that though, I do want to state though, the reason why I think this is because Mordred and her master, they're just, the way they go with each other, they, they perfectly complement each other's character. Like, the way they've been written, and the way they, you know, reveal stuff about their past, if you know Mordred's history, and then we found out about her master's history in this episode, they just perfectly complement each other, the chemistry is really good, and they could just play on each other's own little things with them, like their own little traits, and it just makes it so enjoyable when you watch them being bros with each other. And that's what I really love about their, you know, characters, and why I think I would love it if they were given more space spotlight, which is probably a missed opportunity in my personal opinion when it comes to this series. Now, anyways, let's dive into the development, the characterization for Mordred's master. So, it is revealed that what he wants, what he wants to obtain with the Holy Grail is to fix his problem he's had, his family's problem. A long time ago, many generations ago, his family was a dying uh, magic family. His family's line was basically reaching to an end. And they were no longer as strong as they were. Like, they weren't strong at all. And their line was about to end. They weren't recognized. And eventually, one of his ancestors decided to make, like, a deal with the devil. Literally. And when he made a deal with the devil, obviously, his family gained a lot of wealth, a lot of power. They became well-known. And one of the most powerful families in history, on, you know, for magicians and stuff. And so, when you see stuff like this, you're like, okay, so... They became really well known and all that, but obviously there has to be a cost. There is a price for all of this great power. And that is very true, actually. I mean, when you look at different things from, you know, Fate and all that type moon, you know that there's always some form of price or something big behind the scenes. If you're given something like a great miracle, there's always something that is taken away or something you gotta pay to be able to have this miracle. And that's basically what was going on here. His family that decided to make the deal with the devil... They costed the future line of the house, and right now the master of Mordred, he is the last of his family. He is the last person that could ever have his, you know, family's crest. He is the only one that could use their magic. Now, I don't know how many of you are new to the Fate series, like the Fate franchise at all. Like, I don't know if this is your first series you watched, or if you've seen Fate Stay Night and Fate Zero, or if you played the visual novels, but to kind of give a brief FYI if you're unaware of it, there's individual magicians, okay, or uh, magic families, okay, they have their own family line, and as the family line continues, their magic gets stronger and stronger and all that. You can see a lot of examples to this in Fate Stay Night and Fate Zero, and basically over time, their power gets a lot stronger, the families become well-known, and that's basically how Mordred's master is. His family is well-known now, because they've lived for many generations. However, to pass on the magic from, you know, the, each individual family member, you have to be able to give up your family crest to someone, which is kind of like a ceremony. It's a, it's a process, and we see an example of this in the episode with the flashback when, you know, he tried to give, uh, you know, an adopted child his family crest, and basically the child died. Well, the thing here is, is that if he can't give over the family crest, that basically means that his family line, all the stuff that his family has accomplished, learnt, and, you know, managed to do throughout all these generations will become lost. It's like it was all for nothing, because one of the big things about, you know, magic families is to be able to pass this on. If they can't pass it on, their family line doesn't just die because of blood-related things, it dies because they can't even pass on their knowledge whatsoever. So that's how important this is, and that's why he wants to do that. So basically, when he reveals what is going on and how if he tries to give his, you know, magic family crest to anyone, they die from like a poison, like a toxin, and they all just, you know, 
perish, it's kind of sad. You're like, so this man, he's been forced to be the last of his family, and he wants to be able to fix this for he can actually, you know, have descendants, which is a really impactful scene because it really correlates with Mordred Saber's actual motives and what happened to her past as well if you know the history of Mordred. So to give a brief update if you're unaware, to kind of simplify things, Mordred has daddy issues. Mordred straight up has daddy issues when it comes to King Arthur, you know, the saber from Fate Stay Night and Fate Zero, has daddy issues, and in actual, you know, history and all that, if you know about Mordred, Mordred basically, the reason what led to Mordred's rebellion was thanks to how King Arthur looked at Mordred. Didn't really respect Mordred, didn't respect Mordred as, you know, the son of King Arthur or anything, just did not respect Mordred whatsoever, which eventually led Mordred to, you know, rebel against King Arthur. And so in this case, when he was revealing his past, for instance, you know, Mordred's uh, master was revealing his past, that was correlating with Mordred's past. And Mordred, when, you know, she asked the question, do you remember your child? Do you remember the child and all that? And he's like, yeah, of course I do and all that. I think about it all the time. That was basically confirmation that they have become you know, understanding. They have a mutual understanding between each other, and they know now that they can properly work together, both of their goals align together, but also they both respect each other. There is just mutual respect between these two. They were already on good terms, but after that reveal, Mordred has a lot more respect for her master because of what he revealed. So anyways, getting off of that, Let's talk about the other stuff. So, mainly this episode was actually diving into what everybody wants. What is their goal? What is their wish? Now, I'm not going to dive into spoiler details because I don't want to spoil anything from Heaven's Fill because I know there's many out there that have not, you know, watched the movie. Or the movie's not actually not even out yet, but hasn't, you know, played the visual novel and are waiting for the movie to come out to actually know what Heaven's Fill is about. So, I'm going to avoid spoilers. However... There is a lot of talk about the Grell and wishes, and for instance, what people want from the Grell and what they want to wish for. In this case, we have to look at the individual wishes. It kind of shows an insight to our characters and what they kind of want and how they view the world. Shiro, he's a character that wants to save all of mankind. Now, there's many ways to interpret that phrase. There's so many ways. There is a darker way to, you know, interpret that or a very good way to interpret that. You know, let's look at both sides, okay? Let's say you wanted, you know, to save all mankind, and you actually are trying to be, you know, a good person about this, okay? If you want to save all mankind, maybe you can give them eternal life, and eternal prosperity, where, you know, humanity will flourish, and it will go into the stars, and they will, you know, have many planets to call their own home, stuff like that. We will just flourish as a species, and we will expand, and we will probably never have death. Basically, say, uh, saving all mankind, or ending all war, or something like that. Now, another way to look at it, a darker perspective, is I want to save all of humanity from itself, so let's just wipe out the entire species. So that's like another way you can approach this subject, and so that's what makes Shiro's objective, his wish, so scary, because depending on how he goes about it, could literally change the entire world. I mean, either way, it's going to change the world, but it wants a very dark perspective if he goes along a certain way with it. Now, here's another thing, too. You also have to remember that the wish... The Grell cannot just grant everything. It goes by, like, certain theories and, you know, stuff that, you know, could actually make sense. Something that could actually happen. And so, in this case, if you ask for something that doesn't make too much sense and it's not really possible, then it's not going to happen. So, however he wants to save mankind, it has to be something that can actually happen. So, like I said, the eradication of all of humanity, that could be what he wants. Or, in this case, when, you know, Achilles, he wants to be a hero and all that, basically... That could mean that he wants to be brought back to life, or, you know, he wants to go back to his time and then be brought back to life or something. It has to be something that is necessarily possible in magic, not something that's completely, you know, beyond the realm of anything that's possible. But on top of that, though, the interpretation of it, how it is stated. It's very similar to the command seals on the Masters, and they were kind of a focus in this episode as well. Basically, command seals work in a very similar way. Depending on, you know, the interpretation of the command seal, how you order your servant determines the bounds and restrictions of it. Like, if you say you cannot attack, you know, certain people, there could be certain ways that the servant could work around that order because of how it's done, because it doesn't have absolute control because of the interpretation of it. So that's what I wanted to explain. Anyways, let's talk about, you know, Atalanta. So Atalanta, she wants to have all children be loved, which is a very noble thing. I mean, 
It makes sense. I don't. Uh, it makes sense judging by her like origin story. I mean, I don't know everything about her, but when you think about it and all that, she has the serious side to her, and it could surprise many to see how she actually has a really kind wish. But if you kind of know somewhat about her past, then most likely you're gonna realize that this makes a lot of sense why she would actually want something like that. And Achilles wanting to be a hero again makes perfect sense. It fits with his lore as well. Then we go over into you know others. We go into like our other characters of what they want. Like we have where, you know, the teacher, the great teacher Chiron, what he wants and all that, I mean, the others, I mean, it just shows, like, you know, insight to how they are as people and how what their wish could really just shape the entire world and how it could cause drastic effects depending on how they go about, you know, giving it to the grill. Anyways, I want to talk about Shakespeare for a second, okay? You know how I said I would love to have more Mordred and her master working together and having more of the spotlight of the series? I could say the exact same thing of Shakespeare. I really love Shakespeare. It's not the fact that I just like Shakespeare in history. I just really like Shakespeare's character in this series, his caster, and his role in the story, and how he wants to watch everything unfold and all that because it's fascinating, and he likes how, you know, Shiro wants to shape the entirety of the world and, you know, save all of mankind. I find it very fascinating by the way he, you know, acts and stuff. I don't know, just his voice actor really brings life to the character, and I would love more of him. I just, it really saddens me that there's not a whole lot of his character in the show. He's pops up every so often, but he doesn't have a lot of time to himself, which I feel like, once again, is another wasted opportunity. So that's about it. I mean, the episode is very simple overall. I mean, we have stuff going on with, you know, the homunculus and all that, and how, you know, they're getting proper treatment, and, you know, being treated a little bit fairly now in the series. I mean, you have stuff like that going on, but overall, there was a plot progression in terms of the characters, finding out what they want, and that's about it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love you all so much, and if you enjoy my content, please subscribe, and if you like this video, please leave a like. I love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.